Hare Krishna Dhanrat Panams. In this video, we're going to tell you two pastimes from Mahaprabhu's childhood that show how he is actually Swayam Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord Himself. So, first one is that when Mahaprabhu is just a little baby boy, one time a traveling Brahmin, mendicant, he came to the house of Sri Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata. They themselves were well regarded. Brahmins there in the society in Sri Kulia Navadvip. And so this Brahmin, when the Brahmins are traveling here and there, they stop at different homes of other Brahmins. And in this way, in those places, they will worship Shalagram because they know those places will be pure and have like the kitchen will be clean so they can serve Takaji with pots that aren't remnants and contaminated. Those who are in other uh, caste there don't always follow the proper etiquette. Like when one is uh, worshipping Shalagram, one has to follow very strict rules and regulations. So this Brahmin stopped at the house of Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata. They welcomed him and cleaned the kitchen and gave him place there to cook and worship his Shalagram. So this Brahmin then, he began making a very opulent feast for the Lord, his pleasure. And then after he finished cooking, he went into the altar room and began to offer the boga. When we offer boga to the Lord, closing his eyes, ringing the bell, chanting different mantras, inviting the Lord to take a seat, washing the Lord's feet, giving water to wash his mouth, giving flowers. In this way, then one offers the boga, idam naividyam. So as he was offering this boga, etat naividyam, then he heard some sounds in the altar. And he was thinking, what is this? So he opened his eyes. He was meditating on offering the he had one Shalagram, but he also had one Balgo Didi, one little Balgo Didi. So he heard some noise and he's thinking, what is this in the altar? Maybe some mouse or something has come. He heard some sounds like something moving on the plate. And he opened his eyes and saw in astonishment that there was Nimai, this baby boy, Godhari, very happily and enthusiastically eating all his offerings. And he became astonished, no, what has happened? Now everything is lost. I worked for many hours making all these wonderful preparations to offer my Balgo Baldidi and now in the middle Nehemiah has come and spoiled everything. So he was very disturbed. And when he made this sound, then Sachimata and Jagannath Mishra came and saw, oh Nehemiah is eating the boga in the altar room. And so they chastised Nehemiah, Ay Nehemiah, don't you know this is boga? Why are you taking the boga? When it's prasad, then you can take Krishna's prasad. Why are you trying to take boga? So they chastised Nehemiah and took him into another room. and. They begged for the Brahmin again, please one time, please cook again. This time it was already getting to late afternoon. So the Brahmin accepted, he said, oh, he's just a little boy, he doesn't know any better. So he went and again they cleaned the kitchen. Again, he began to prepare all the different preparations. When you offer boga to Takaji or some offering, everything must be very clean and pure. Nothing can be remnants. And also if you cook in that kitchen one time, you have to clean the kitchen again. So it took a long time to clean the kitchen again, preparing all the pots again, again preparing the different varieties of vegetables, dals, rice, sweets. So again the Brahmin cooked. And subscribed again when he was offering. Somehow or other, Nimai escaped the arms of Sachimata. She left him in a room thinking that, oh, we've left him in a room. Again he came inside and began eating the boga. The Brahmin is thinking, what can I do? Again and again this boy comes and disturbs my offering. I don't know what pastime the Lord is performing today. So then again Nimayan was taken. This time he was taken to another house, their neighbor's, neighboring house, like the room of their friends. And again they requested the Brahmin. This time it's now becoming late at night. And he said, now this is not the time to offer. It's like 10, 11. He said, no problem, Balgopal, he's hungry all the time. Mother Yashoda, if the devotees have any love, he accepts this love of the devotees. He's always prem ke buke. He's always hungry for love. So again and again, they fell at the feet and said, please, one more time. So this now we're getting 10, 11 o'clock. Again, they cleaned the kitchen. Again, cut vegetables, prepared all the different sweets and preparations. And then now at like midnight, he began to offer. And he said, make sure that boy is protected and far away. He was being kept in another room, a completely different building. And yet, when the Brahmin was closing his eyes, offering the boga, again he heard the sound and again he opened his eyes and said, Oh my God, again this boy is here. He became completely bewildered. At that time, he was thinking, he didn't make any noise at the time. He think, this is the Lord's desire, what can I do? At that moment he saw, this boy is none other than Balgopal Krishna himself. 
That boy appeared first in his four-armed form, Bhagavan Sri Vishnu himself, to show the Brahmin, I am none other than Shalagram, I am that Narayan myself. And then he appeared in Krishna's form, Balgopal, like Krishna also did for Arjuna. He showed his four-armed form, showed his thousand-armed universal form, and then he showed his beautiful original two-armed form. So Nimai appeared like that and revealed and gave darshan to that Brahmin. And the Brahmin began to exhibit all the symptoms of ecstasy. Weeping, hair standing on end, herpulation, choked up, his voice choked up, tears flowed from his eyes. He was shivering, changing complexion. All the Asta Sattvic Vikar, Eightfold Symptoms of Ecstasy, manifested on his body. And he felt like, now my life is truly successful. But Nimai then said, shh, don't tell anybody. I am now performing my Marte Lila, my human-like pastimes. If you reveal that I am that none other than that Sri Krishna, none other than that Sri Narayan, then it will cause some disturbance in my pastimes. Therefore, keep this as a secret. So the Brahmin accepted Mahaprabhu's request, and the next day he went on his way. He didn't reveal that Nimai came again that third time and disturbed his offering. And then when Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata said, everything went well the last time, he said, yes, everything went perfectly. I've never been so happy in my life. Thank you so much. You've been so helpful. So this is the first pastime in Mahaprabhu's infancy that shows that actually he is Swayam Bhagavan. By his own Leela, he has revealed that he is none other than that Supreme Lord himself. Non-different from Sri Krishna. In the spiritual world, Mahaprabhu has his own eternal abode. Sri Krishna has his own eternal abode. Mahaprabhu is eternally present in Svetadweep, Mayapur or Navadweep Dham. Sri Krishna is eternally present in Golok Brindavan, Gokul Brindavan. So this is one pastime of Mahaprabhu that reveals that he is Swayam Bhagavan. The next pastime is when Mahaprabhu is now a little bit older. He is now like a young boy and he was going to the school of Gangadas Pandit. But Gangadas Pandit saw that he was so learned from his childhood that many other boys, he was accepted like the school monitor. And then from that time on, he began to give lessons separately to the boys. And so one day, Mahaprabhu would be sitting on the banks of the Ganga. They would go and play in the Ganga and then sit on the banks of the Ganga towards the Sandhya time and they would all have discussions. So there was one Digvijay Pandit, one learned scholar who had gone in all directions in India and conquered all the different uh, pundits or scholars and he would become therefore called Digvijay. Vijay means someone who is victorious in all directions, Digvijay, like Dasarath. Dasarath means whose chariot has gone in all ten directions and conquered everyone, above in the subterranean regions, in the heavenly regions, in all eight corners of the world. That means Dasarath. In the same way, Digvijay Pandit, he had gone in all different directions and conquered over all the different personalities. Therefore, he was Keshav Kashmiri. He had received some special boons from Sarasvati by worshipping her, the goddess of learning, the goddess of wisdom, that he had been able to conquer everyone. So he came last to Navadweep, the last place on his tour of trying his victory lap. He was coming to Navadweep because Navadweep was where all the famous scholars, Sanskrit logicians, Naya Pandits, they were all present. So when Keshav Kashmiri came to Navadweep, he was followed by his retinue, elephants, servants, you know, everyone worshipping him, fans, chariots, blowing conch shells, and all the pundits in Navadweep were scared, thinking, oh, if he defeats us, then our prestige will be diminished. So when he met with them, he said, I want to debate with you. So they said, okay, first you should debate with one of our younger scholars, then if you can qualify, the te pass the test with him, then you can debate with us. They use this as a tactic, thinking, oh, let's see, Nimai is very puffed up now. They call him Nimai Pandit. He was, they, he was so skilled in his debate that when people would be crossing the street with him, he would stop them and argue with them and like soundly defeat them. Even Garadhar Pandit is famous. When he was young, Mahaprabhu would always be arguing and trying to defeat him. And so sometimes people would see Mahaprabhu coming and they would be scared and go to the side. That all the scholars of Navadu were defeated, all the Smarthas especially. Smarta Brahmins. So they thought, okay, if Keshav Kashmiri defeats Nimai, then his pride will be diminished. And if he is defeated, then we won't have to face him. And we can say, oh, look, you were defeated by a young boy, young scholar. So how you're not even qualified to face us. So in this way, they told him, oh, where is that Nimai? Keshav Kashmiri asked. He said, oh, you go in the evening time. He's at the bank of the Ganga towards the evening, a time of dusk. So he went to the Ganga and when he saw Mahaprabhu, it was like the moon surrounded by many stars. All the different Gwalas, all the different Brahmin boys, they were all sitting around Mahaprabhu, like different constellations around the moon. And Keshav Kashmiri was astonished by the beauty of Gaurasundar. 
Gora Chandra. Gora Chandra means who is effulgent and cooling like the rays of the moon. And Gora Sundar, who is so beautiful, like the rays of the sun. So he was seeing this Gora Sundar, how beautiful he was, and he was attracted, but he was thinking, now I have to maintain my maryada. So he approached Nimai, and Nimai very respectfully welcomed him, gave him an elevated seat. He said, Oh Maharaji, Oh Panditji, you have come and graced us by your, your presence. Please show us your wonderful wisdom. Please show us your learning. And so then he said, What would you like to hear? He said, Now we are present beside Ganga Devi. She is the Lord's footpath water personified. She is the most holy of rivers. In the Bhagavatam, it said, There's a Devanama Chitagata. That of all the rivers, Ninnam Ganayata Ganga, of all holy rivers, Ganga is the greatest. So please, you should praise Ganga Devi. So without any pause, Keshav, Keshav Kesmiri wrote or composed 100 original verses, and in a very rapid sequence, he recited them all. He said, These are my original compositions praising the Ganga. And all the boys were clapping and astonished. How wonderful! In, very, in a moment's notice, he recited 100 verses that he had just composed one after another, like a Gatling gun, like a machine gun, repetition of the verses. So everyone was very happy. Then he was smiling, thinking like, just see my scholarly erudition. Just see how intelligent I am. So then Mahaprabhu paused and then he said, okay, this is very nice. Can you please tell us about the merits of your composition and as well as if there's any demerits? And Keshwar Kasmiri was thinking, how can you say, okay, there are many merits, there are unlimited merits, but how can you say there's any demerit, anything that is like shortcoming? So Mahaprabhu said, anything must have some, it, you, it's not like you are writing the Shrutis, the Veda themselves, you are not Ved Vyat. Mahaprabhu is not saying this, but it's like showing that this person is a little bit proud now of his so-called learning. Like, it's not like we are Ved Vyas, that whatever we say, the composition has not even a small grammatical fault or anything like that. There must be some little grammatical error or some little repetition, redundancy, something like that. So Mahaprabhu said, please tell us the merits of your composition and if there's anything shortcoming, you can also tell that. So he said, I will speak the merits, but I will, there is no demerit. So he spoke all the glories of how he wrote his different composition. And then he said, okay, Nimai, now you can speak about it. So Mahaprabhu, there was, Mahaprabhu picked out one of the verses, Bhavani Bharata, that starts like that. I think it's like the 55th or one of those later verses. And he recited it word for word as Keshav Kashmiri had said. And he, Keshav Kashmiri, hearing that Nimai was, he had not only heard everything, but he was Shruti Dad. He immediately caught and remembered all the hundred verses. Mahaprabhu saying, oh, in this verse there's that, in this verse there's that quality, in this verse that quality. He was able to immediately memorize the entire hundred verses. And then Keshav Kashmiri, he mentioned five merits of one particular verse. Mahaprabhu mentioned five more. He said, you mentioned these, these are good, but there are five more, and then there are five discrepancies. And Keshav's, Kashmir's mind was blown, and he mentioned one, saying, Bhavani Bharata, you have given some redundancy, make it sound like Bhavani, Goddess Parvati, is not chaste. By your grammatical flaw, or you have done some redundancy, that she is the wife of Shiva, in one word, Bhavani means she is the wife of Shiva, and Bharata also means that Shiva is her husband, so there's some redundancy there. She has two husbands then. doesn't say Shiva, Bharata, and Bhavani. So this is some discrepancy. This can be seen like sometimes when we're speaking, we think we're glorifying, but we may be making some slight like offense also. So we have to be very careful. That's why we have to be under guidance of Guru Vaishnava so they can correct us. So when Mahaprabhu said like this, Kesha community was completely humiliated. And then the boys began to like kind of snicker and laugh. But Mahaprabhu made them silent. He said, no, do not dishonor any... Guru, any Acharya, any Mahanta, you should be very respectful. We're only having some discussion. So Kesha Kasmiri took his leave, he went back and that night he was praying to his goddess Sarasvati, how could this happen? I was defeated by this young boy. And praying all night, then goddess Sarasvati appeared to him in a vision and said, oh, you do not know, that boy is not, not other than my husband, God, the Supreme Lord, Narayan himself. Goddess Sarasvati is one of the eternal consorts of the Lord, it's one of his shaktis. So he, she said, the morning, morning, the early morning, go and take shelter of him. He is that Supreme Lord himself. So the next morning, Keshav Kishmiri went and offered 
prostrated obeisance at the lotus feet of Sri Nimai. Nimai embraced him, and Nimai revealed his form as the Supreme Lord himself. And Keshav Kasmiri felt, now my life is successful. So this is the second pastime in Mahaprabhu's childhood that shows that he is Svayam Bhagavan. In the next video, we'll tell you six pastimes of Mahaprabhu in his youth in Navadvip that also show that he is Bhagavan. So in this way, there are many pastimes, even though Mahaprabhu is the hidden Channa avatar, Mahaprabhu is the hidden incarnation of God. But still, in his pastimes, there are many examples how he revealed that he is that Supreme Lord himself. He is Avatari, the root of all incarnations, not the incarnation. He is not an avatar, he is avatari, the original incarnation, the original Lord himself. So thanks for watching. Any questions, comments, please put them down below. Hare Krishna.